Hello all, Archana here. I welcome you all to my today's session. We are in the second chapter today, that is index numbers. Second chapter of statistics. Okay, so let's start. So let us see now what is the meaning of index number. So this index number is a percentage ratio which measures the average changes of several variables between two different times, places or situations. So you can understand from this only that they are com uh, com here in index number comparison is made between two times or between two different places or comparison between two different situations, isn't it? So we often read in newspapers about relative changes in the price of particular commodities like steel, gold, etc. Isn't it? Or we also see the difference uh, between commodities like com uh, consumer goods, milk or milk products, cosmetics, etc. Isn't it? So these facts are described using our index numbers. So formally, the index number was constructed by an Italian called Mr. Carly in the year 1764. This is done to compare the changes in price for the year 1750 with the price level in 1500. So this was done to study the to study the effect of discovery of America on the price level in Italy. So initially the index numbers were designed to study the changes in the price level or the purchasing power of money. Okay. But now this index number we can see in almost all the fields. Okay. So it's also this index number also acts as a barometer. So what is barometer now? So this barometer it is a measurement to find out the variations or fluctuations in the economic conditions of a country. So when index numbers of prices, listen carefully, prices, outputs or bank deposits, reserves are prepared individually, they put a light on the variations in the price level of business activities. Okay, so now we prepared the indexes of prices, output, bank deposits individually, isn't it? So when individually they are prepared, they are called as simple index number. So now all the simple index numbers when combined together, we call it as composite index. Okay, so this composite index could act as an economic barometer. Okay, so our next topic now, it is terminologies. Here, mainly two terms are there, base spread and current spread. To study this, go for the below picture, just look into it. Here, prices of 1998, 1999 and 2000 are given, isn't it? So if you are comparing between 1998 and 1999, you can say as our base spread is 1998 and current spread will be 1999. And if you are comparing between 1999 and 2000, you can say as 1999 is our base spread and 2000 is our current spread. Okay. And now let us see the uses of index numbers. And the first one is it simplifies the data and facilitates for comparison. So you can understand this, right? What is comparison? How it is compared? between base year and current year, current year, isn't it? Yeah, so the next one is, it helps in studying trends and tendencies. So what is this trends and tendencies now? Say for example, if uh, one umbrella seller is, seller is there, he can say that he, for his uh, umbrellas, there is demand only during monsoon season, isn't it? 
so nowhere he can say as uh, he cannot prove anywhere that uh, his umbrellas are having demand during winter season isn't it so that is trends now okay so first you should understand the trends okay so this index number they helps uh, they help us in understanding the trends and tendencies and the next one is it helps in measuring purchasing power so what is purchasing power now so for example if you are having 1000 rupees okay in 2020 okay now again let us compare between what 2020 and 2010 okay so if you listen to your parents you might have uh, heard them saying in 2020 or uh, during uh, in 20 not in 2020 in they when they were small during their childhood they could uh, they could not Im uh, even imagine that uh, they had 1000 rupees because it was that much it had that much value then but now if we people uh, speak about 1000 rupees it uh, it is having very less value isn't it so with uh, just 1000 rupees then they could purchase more co quantity of uh, items when compared to today's isn't it with the uh, 1000 rupees we can purchase very less quantity of goods now isn't it so that is the purchasing power of money it purely depends or uh, depends on inflation and deflation and the next one is it measures the cost of living of different group of people here cost of uh, living let us compare between rural and urban so what i can say is in rural area the cost of living is less when compared with the cost of living of urban area so now try to analyze what i said so that's about the cost of living we already studied that in economics next it is used by the government to frame suitable policies so these index numbers are also used by the government to frame the suitable policies regarding fixation of bank rates allowance to government employees license to new firms imports exports taxation etc so that's all about the uses of index numbers so now let us see the okay, limitations of index numbers and the first one is based on sample data so if you are going for a particular study of india okay you are studying on a particular topic in india it doesn't mean that uh, you have to go to every like a new kind corner of india isn't it it is not possible also so what you are doing you are just taking the samples isn't it so sample may differ from one place to another place isn't it so that is the first limitation of index number and the second one is quality of product ignored here when it comes to index number we are mainly comparing between the price and the quantity or the volume of the products and we are not concentrating much on quality so that is the another limitation of index numbers and the third one is may be misused to get the desired conclusion so we have already seen that this index number is prepared based on sample data isn't it so for example now one person he wanted to prove that uh, for his products there is demand in our country so what he'll do is he'll go to that particular locality where there is more demand for his products okay and anyways we are going with sample data isn't it we are not going to nook and corner of india uh, to get the index isn't it so like that what he will do is he'll prepare the index number using the sample data from the place where uh, he may get the favorable results isn't it so that's how uh, he can go for the conclusions so this is another limitation of index numbers and then next one is customs traditions and habits of people vary from time to time we cannot expect to have a demand for all the products all the time okay 
particular product will have its own season to be used isn't it so customs traditions and habits of people vary from time to time and the last one is numerous formulas you uh, results in different answers so this is one limitation and also drawback that index numbers consist of many formulas so these formulas whatever formulas are there no many formulas are there these formulas do not give same answers okay it uh, varies from one formula to another formula so this is another limitation of index numbers yes and our next topic is types of index numbers and the first one is price index numbers changes in the prices are compared between base year and current year and this is denoted by p01 so price indexes are further subdivided into the following classes wholesale price index numbers and retail price index numbers so wholesale price price index numbers they compare the wholesale prices in different places and when it comes to retail price index number again they are comparing between the retail prices of four different places so this uh, retail prices no they are ha also having another uh, category that is consumer price index number which is commonly known as cost of living index okay so the second type is quantity index numbers this is quantity index number study the relative changes in the volume of goods produced or consumed or distributed this again is denoted by q01 and the next one is value index numbers so when it comes to value index numbers they study the relative changes in the total money value of production or transaction and it is denoted by v01 yes and the next one is steps in construction of index numbers and the first step is defining the purpose the first and foremost problem in the construction of index numbers is to define clearly and precisely the purpose for which the index number is used isn't it or index number is required so first you should have one particular reason why i am going to prepare this index number so once of once the purpose of index number is known it helps in selection of items averages weights etc second one is selection of base period base year you already studied that isn't it so usually the index number the index for the base year is always 100 okay so this uh, while selecting the base year we have to keep in mind several points and the first one is base year should be economically stable that means there should not be any inflation deflation in the year which we are going to select as a base period and the second one is the base period should not be too distant from the current period there should be nominal distance between the base year and current period and the last one is depending on the situation the base period is fixed or chain based so fixed uh, fixed index uh, base period means for all the current years we keep fixed period as a fixed it will not change okay and when it comes to chain base we are taking base year the immediate previous year okay yes and the third one is selection of commodities or items so the selection of commodities basically depends on the purpose of survey and the next one is obtaining price quotation we all know that the prices of many commodities vary from place to place and also they vary from shop to place uh, shop to shop in some place in some places isn't it so price quotations are to be obtained first from different places different agencies at regular intervals and once after obtaining the price quotations averages are taken and used in construction of index numbers so the next one is choice of an average 
So the commonly used averages are arithmetic mean and geometric mean. So arithmetic mean means it is very simple, isn't it, to calculate. However, the geometric mean is the best average for averaging ratios and relative changes. It is preferred in construction of index numbers for the sake of greater accuracy and precision. So the next one is selection of weights. So the selection of weights is nothing but the importance given to each items. Okay. And the last one is selection of suitable formula. You all know that index number consists of many formulas now. So based or the based on the availability of data, we have to select the suitable formula. Okay. So with this, I'm concluding today's session. In the next session, I will start with practicals. Thank you.